Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. It is the start to a new year, and many want to take this season of new beginnings to get organized. Many of us have spent months stuck inside our homes, have had a good long look at the clutter and extra stuff that fill our spaces. So let us call in the expert. Joining me now, Jennifer Snyder of Neat as a Pin and uh I tell you what, you know, I I, I, see, I love to see before and after pictures, so I wish this were video, so we could maybe, I, I bet you've seen some pretty amazing transformations with some of your clients. I have. I have seen big transformations, and what is so interesting for me is, you know, I facilitate a declutter challenge, and, and they post their before and after pictures. Oh, yeah. And so I get to, I get to see that. It's a private face, Facebook group with that group, but they each day they have something to do, and they take their own before and after pictures, and I just cheer them on and we have a, a weekly meeting where they can ask me questions and it's, it's so much fun, but yes, the before and after the, the transformation, you know, it's, it's not just your space, it's your heart too. What makes it so hard to part with things? It's the decision. It's the fear of making the wrong decision. And mm -hmm. I'm going to need that tomorrow. <laughs> as soon as I get rid of that, I'm exactly. going to need it. <laughs> that is exactly right. So first and foremost, we have we have all these things in our house for starters. And that those things, we don't think about them. So just let's say a potato masher. I made a Facebook post about I, potato I, I specifically <laughs> wrote that down. I, I wanted to talk about that. And I was just being silly just because they're big <laughs> and they don't fit in the drawer. And No, they don't. And so, But I do use mine. <laughs> and say, and there's so many people that do. And it's, you know, so we, we have this, these things in the drawer or an extra, an extra potato peeler that's rusty and broken. Right. We see it in the drawer when we're looking for a potato peeler. I know I don't want that one. I want this one. And we are so focused on the potato peeler that we need that we, we are not focused on the one that we don't. We just push it out of the way like a pen that doesn't write and go on. And then we don't think about that again until we need another potato peeler, we just move it out of the way. And so when you do that with potato peelers and potato mashers or pens that don't write or clothes even, you just move the stuff out of the way because you're busy thinking about something else. It just accumulates in the background. So then when it comes time to get rid of things, you haven't thought about it. You don't need it. You don't use it. But all of a sudden, here it is front of mind. And, and, it, and then it's like, what if I do need it? So what if I do? What if I do? And when I'm working with people, my question is, what if, what if you do and you don't have it? What happens? <laughs> and so if you I could use a, a paring knife, exactly. You know, and, and with the potato masher, my aunt gave me a really hard time. She's like, we can't be, we, we can't be related <laughs> and because I don't have a potato masher. And it's like, here's the thing. I like cream cheese in my potatoes and the potato oh. masher doesn't do anything with the cream cheese. I got to use the Cuisinart. I got to use the big mixer. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I don't need a potato masher. <laughs> You just have to pick your poison, I guess, in some <laughs> right. in some cases. But 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 I but I agree. I mean, if you if I actually took an assessment of kitchen drawers, gadgets, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, there would be multiples mm -hmm. of, of lots of things. And that's when I work with people. Like there, there's a, a precious lady I've been working with her. Every week we've been going through an area of her kitchen, and I lay all these things out. And, and she's like, I had no idea I had this many of these. And I had no idea I had this many of these because they're just in there. They're just this stuff soup. And you can't, you can't necessarily make it out. You're looking for one thing. That's the one thing you get. But when you lay out all of your measuring cups, when you lay out all of the can openers, the bottle openers, all of the serving spoons, you don't realize how many you have until you see them out of the space in which they're stored. And so the first step in getting rid of the things that you no longer need is to, A, clear the space and look at it outside of where it's been stored. You're so used to seeing it where it's been that 
that you're not going to see it. Well, we moved mm-hmm. about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I and I moved from a house that had lots and lots of drawers to one that did not have very many drawers mm-hmm. at all. And so speaking of kitchen gadgets, mm-hmm. I've got these two baskets that <laughs> are just stuck in the pantry filled with all this stuff right. that course Christmas comes and my daughter's-in-law oh do you have a this and went yeah I said this basket so it pulled I said the basket of death you know you pull it out because there may be a knife I mean there could be all kinds of sharp things in there so I I really you know that's one of those I got to get organized with this stuff but I I just don't have a place to put it because I don't have the drawers that I used to put all this stuff in what what you want to do especially with your kitchen and if you don't have a lot you know it's actually easier to go from a lot of drawers to fewer drawers than the other way around is it really it is because if you go from a few those few all have jobs and then if you have if you go from five drawers to 10 drawers then you have t- five extra drawers without a job so then what you have is you have your same five drawers plus five junk drawers and that's just <laughs> how that works yeah but if you go from if you go from a lot of drawers to a couple, what I suggest you do, give each drawer a job. If it has a job, it's going to serve its job. So let's say your your silverware drawer, Mm -hmm. you know to go there for a fork. You probably don't go there for a measuring spoon. So then- Well, in my case, yeah, I do. (laughs) You do. (laughs) Well, then if it's, you know, silverware can then become spoons and forks and Mm -hmm, knives. mm -hmm. So measuring spoons would then go into that category. Along the side. Along the side. Mm-hmm. And so, but you wouldn't put your potato masher in there. And so that no, wouldn't fit. The drawer wouldn't shut with the <laughs> right. dying potato masher. So if you give each one a drawer, like your um, your pot holders and your cup towels, mm-hmm. the soft fabric things sure. should go in a drawer together. And your serving pieces should probably go somewhere else. But with your basket in the pantry, I recommend get, get a plastic box. And so baskets have a place and baskets are very handy but they are difficult to clean. Right. So, and they're open. So any, any powder or flour that might go poof will land in your basket. Any dust that lands, that settles is going to land in your basket. And so anything stored in that open container like that, you're going to have to wash it before you use it. Mm-hmm. But if you store it in something plastic with a lid, then it can store and it can store cleanly and not, and not get dirty. But I would say give everything a job, even your baskets. So even if your baskets, your your basket turned box. It's like big strainers mm-hmm. and clunky kind of stuff. Yep. I would just call it big gadgets. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the pantry. Okay. Because, because I know, you know, I have this vision of everything in beautiful little clear containers with pretty little printing on the, you know. And, and it really, it costs a lot of money to buy all that stuff. It does cost a lot of so, money. So, so. What is your best suggestion on, on organizing a pantry in, in nice airtight containers for things like, you know, chopped nuts and things like that, which I have tried to do that just because I've thrown so much stuff away because it just went bad over time. So what you want is you want clear containers. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are interested in the container store because it's so romantic. It's the <laughs> container store. Oh, I know. Your heart just sort of skips a beat when you go, <laughs> is it just me? It's not just you. <laughs> but ikea ikea is is just as good yeah but a lot less expensive a lot cheaper yeah a lot less expensive walmart some of my favorite organizing containers are glass jars that are five dollars a piece at walmart mm-hmm. they are they're they have lids they can line up beautifully you can see what's inside and and even so you can buy kits um pretty label kits you can buy them on etsy you can buy them on amazon you're not, they're not going to be customized. They're just a pre-printed die cut kit of, of labels. But even, even if you used a Cricut, you can get, you can get a label maker for $20. My favorite in my garage, and I know we're not talking about the garage, but I like the big frog tape. It's frog painters tape. It's yellow. It's yellow painters tape, and it's probably an inch and a half wide. Mm -hmm. And so all of my stuff in the garage, they don't have the little label maker tape because it's really small. They have those big yellow, the big yellow tape, and I just use a Sharpie and write and on right there on what it. it is. And so your labels don't have to be, don't have to be anything fancy. You can, if you have beautiful handwriting, you can put a piece of clear scotch tape onto a clear container and write with a Sharpie what's on there. And even so, some of the containers, like your nuts, if if right now, this season, you have 
you know, this kind of nut, but in the spring you eat a different kind of nut, Mm -hmm. then you can change it. You want to be able to change it. And, and by making our, making our storage containers so specific makes them less functional, makes Hmm. them less functional. So you would be better off with nuts rather than walnuts or peanuts or pecans pecans or almonds. So just nuts, and then if you get different nuts each time, or if this time you get salted and that time you get candy coated, there's just your nuts. Okay. Well, let's move. Let's move. We're kind of moving around the house. Let's move <laughs> to uh, let's say the closet. Okay. <laughs> uh, because I, it may have been yours, and maybe been some other suggestion I saw on Facebook. It was the challenge, the get rid of it challenge, where on day one you get rid of one thing, day two you get rid of two things, till the end of the month you get rid of. 30 or 31 mm-hmm. things. Is that, was that your that deal? Was that wasn't mine. your deal. That wasn't mine, but, and, but I can see doing that. But the, Well, I can see doing that, but the hoarder in me is going, 30 things, you know, I don't, you know, and other people go, well, I tried it and dropped out on day seven, you know. So, you know, sometimes you know, putting those strict rules on yourself can can be tough. But mm-hmm. I know in my closet there, I'm sure there are 30 things that could probably go somewhere else. One thing with your closet and I've always said this, every single article of clothing that you wear should make you feel like a million dollars. If you put on a shirt and you look in the mirror and, and and you're like, Hmm, this, no, it doesn't feel good. Great. Put it back on the hanger and put it back in the front. So you try again tomorrow. And if you try several times and you just can't make yourself wear an article of clothing, then you really don't need it. If every time you put it on, it feels bad, it doesn't deserve a space in your closet. So everything in there should make you feel amazing. That includes the size. The size, if if something is too small and restrictive, you're not going to wear it. It doesn't need to be in your closet. If it's too big and makes you feel frumpy, it doesn't need to be in your closet. And so what I suggest is whatever size you're wearing, whether it's whether it's a six or a 10 or 14, whatever, have those clothes in your closet, have one size up and one size down and nothing Mm. else. Nothing. Okay. Well, that's a good suggestion. We just talked to Van Davis about, you know, the new healthy you. And I keep thinking, I'm going to lose the weight I need to lose to wear that again. And so there's some things I'm thinking, I just don't want to get rid of that. But then in my case, having had a career on television and suits and, you know, even fashion changes over the 25 years I did it from, we just wore the boxy men's suits to dresses, the skin tight dresses for, you know, a while. And so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna need that stuff. You know, and we keep so many things because we want to fit back into them. Yeah. Yeah. And so depending on how long that has been, once you get to that size, if you go through the effort and you do the work to lose the weight, girl, you deserve new clothes. You, <laughs> I've always thought that too. You I don't. Thought, well, not only that, but just styles after a while. Is there, is the, I know there are some timeless pieces that some people have that they wear for 20 years, you know, that are quality garments, yeah. but for the most part, you know, not, not so much. And so, is there sort of a certain time frame that, you know, after so many seasons, you know, that needs w- to go away or not? I would say five. You know, you, oh, really? don't, you don't want to work for 20 years to lose 50 pounds and then have to wear your big shoulder pads from, from the <laughs> 80s. Right. If you, you know, when you lose the weight, you want to feel amazing and outdated clothes just don't do it. Right. They just don't do it. And, and then we also have the guilt, like with your, you know, your clothes from television, you paid a lot of money for those clothes. And so you have them. And so you want to honor that investment. And so you keep them, but you keep them and you're not wearing them. And so for every day that you keep them and you don't wear them, they become less and less relevant mm-hmm. and less and less sellable, less and less desirable. And so we keep them just because we paid so much money for them. And then we catch ourselves 20 years down the road. Well, I paid $100 for this dress 20 years ago. And it's like, okay, then how much have you paid to insure it and heat and cool it in those 20 <laughs> years when you haven't been wearing it right. too? That's true. And, you know, and a good, a, good, a good barometer, a good gauge is if you have dust, if you have a line of dust on the shoulder or on the crease of a pair of pants because they've been in your closet so long. Mm-hmm. I would say wear them tomorrow or don't wear them at all. Or don't do it. Very good advice. 
That is that is incredible. No, that's that's very good because you know we all have stuff like that. I have you know after five things you know gowns and things like that that probably not ever gonna wear again. You know, and that's the thing about gowns. And now there's rent the runway. And, right, there's and so many places to even wedding dresses. People exactly, are renting them. Yeah, exactly. Because if you have a fantastic gown, you don't want to wear the same gown to everything. A basic black dress is one thing, but a fancy gown is something else. And and so you have a beautiful gown that you love, and you wear it to every event. Then you're like, ooh, are they? She's is, in that again. Is anybody noticing this? <laughs> okay, so we've kind of kind of looked at looked at the uh, at, at the closet. Um, any suggestions about? you know, things that need to be done in the closet for sure. Like um, I know sweaters need to be folded, things mm-hmm. like that, that people don't, don't necessarily know. Yes. Sweaters, sweaters are better folded because they're going to stretch and things that you love, but you're not going to wear often, go ahead and wrap, put it inside of a fabric, not plastic from the cleaners, but a fabric garment bag. Anything that you're storing in the plastic from the cleaners, go ahead and move it to a fabric garment bag, which you can buy at Bed Bath & Beyond. So why is that? Because what you don't want is the dyes or any of the polyester, the the chemicals associated with, with the creation of the garment to react with the plastomers in the bag. Really? You don't want them, you know, after a while. And I don't know if you've ever seen old letter jackets that don't have, they're not, they don't have real leather sleeves. They're, they have um, a plastic sleeve. They'll start to leach and the oils from the plastic will start to to leach out of the jacket and ruin anything nearby. And so you just want it in fabric. And, and things that you're going to keep that long are probably high-end, expensive items. Mm-hmm. And so that's just going to protect them. It's going to protect them from dust, protect them from moths, but it would protect them from any, any reactions with the plastic bags. Hmm, interesting uh, suggestions on where to get fabric bags. At Bed Bath & Beyond. You oh, probably okay. get them on Amazon. Just... I would just look up a fabric, fabric garment bag, and they're not very expensive. Okay, very good. Um, all right, the garage, you know, we all have. I one. just kind of leave it to my husband's. Mm-hmm. Although I have boxes of stuff, you know, that we've been trying to go through a bit by bit. You know, old collections. I've got, mm-hmm. I've got audio reel tapes. I'm like, why do I have this stuff? <laughs> you know, just because mementos. you don't want to get rid of it. I know it's like I do not have a machine to play this on, so. And that's the thing. So we, <laughs> so we keep, we keep, and I know we're, we'll get to the garage, but we keep sentimental items as tokens to help us remember. Mm-hmm. That is the whole reason we keep those things because we don't want to forget. Right. And so anything that we love enough to keep for many, many, many years, whether it was sanctioned by our ancestors that we keep it or we chose to keep it. If we're going to keep those special things because we love them so much, we need to keep them in such a way that honors them. A cardboard box in the garage doesn't honor anything. That's true. And so if you have grandma's quilts, put grandma's quilts in a plastic bin in the top of a closet somewhere in your house, not in a cardboard box in the garage. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're going to have pests come into your home, the garage is the first place they're going to land. And mice, roaches, silverfish, all of those rodents like cardboard. And they're going to go to the cardboard, especially cardboard with soft fabric items in which they can bed that's Mm. inside. So if you love it, store it in your house, for starters. And then from your garage, you want zones. You organize your garage into zones, and your kitchen is the same way. So you should have, depending on what's out there, you may have a lawn and garden zone with mm-hmm. your weed eater and that sort of thing, a sporting goods zone. And, you know, if you have um, bicycles would go in there. If you don't have sporting goods, you may have recreation with things that you enjoy doing outside. A lot of people have camping supplies in the garage. So the camping, so the recreation, the sporting, the tools, if you have um, cleaning supplies out there, then a cleaning supply. So have zones and then you store like items together in that zone. And then you have a place to put things. You know where to go to find things. Mm -hmm. And so if you just have a big, a big jumbled mess, then you've just got a big jumbled mess. And most people would probably prefer to buy something new 
than to go out there and dig for it. And then they order from Amazon. They open it up, toss the box into the mix in the garage. <laughs> oh, it's a good box. It is a good box. <laughs> it is a good box. There's so many good boxes. I know. <laughs> well, you know, of course, I'm imagining my garage. And, and I've got a lot of boxes of Christmas decorations mm-hmm. now that we've just finished taking them all down. And there were a good many things that I just did not use. So suggestions on the best way to kind of go through and Cull. So holiday decorations and and when's the best time to do that? The best time to do it is when you're taking down. Okay. When you're taking down is the best time to do that. And honestly, the the process, the entire process, no matter what it is, you're trying to remove the excess is you bring it all out, you spread it all out. And so if there's things that you're not using year after year after year, if you just leave them in the bottom of the box or if they have their own box, that, then you're not even looking at them. They're just blending into the the background. But take them all out and actually look at them. And and so you take them all out, you see it, then you remove the trash, which isn't always trash. It's not going to the 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 dump necessarily, but the stuff that you're not going to use. Duplicates, things that are broken, things that are ugly, things that are outdated, things that no longer suit your style. Move those out. Then what you're left with are the things that you would use and that you do like. And then you can put those away and donate those others. Mm -hmm. Donate, donate everything that you don't want, as long as it's donatable. Right. But you can do that with anything. So who, who takes donated Christmas? Is Goodwill or? I've given it to the Salvation Army, Mm -hmm. the Salvation Army. And there's, you know, and with the Salvation Army, I know this isn't a plug for them, but I do know that they help, they help people get into homes and, so imagine somebody who hasn't had a home and now they do. Yeah. They want to have Christmas. Sure. They really want to. And and so while you think we think that nobody would want these things, we don't know. Mm-hmm. We really don't know. And and so I have I love to honor other people with with the because I've been blessed with what I have. And I love being able to honor somebody else by blessing them with the things that that I, I have, but I no longer need. Yeah, well said, well said. So many good suggestions. Um, is there is there a part of the house that we haven't <laughs> we haven't hit on that you you tend to? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of people. Just honorable mention are kids' rooms. Mm-hmm. And so I'll tell you, I had a lady come up to me and she was like, you know, my kids they just don't keep their room, and I'm doing these things, and I'm repainting, and I'm redecorating, and I'm like, you know, what the problem is here is what is the eye. Because I am doing these things in my kids' room, but it's your kids that need to be picking the paint. They need to be picking the furniture. They need to be involved. And so I have a lot of people come to me, my kids, my kids, my kids. And it's like, then back off. You know, and this particular lady, her kids were 17 and 16. I'm like, honey, you're, you're, you're done. <laughs> you know, if they haven't figured it out, then you're, it's time to let their peers tell them. If their room smells bad and they, you know, they let their friends tell them that, not mm-hmm. you. But- we, as mothers, as parents, we try to impose our thinking style, our organizing style, our wants on our children. And while they're little and we're, we're making all the decisions for them, that's one thing. But when they get to be about 12 or so, they really need to be involved in the entire process. And if they tell you that they don't want something, believe them. If they tell you they're not going to use something, they're going to wear something, believe them. And and get them in, ask them, you know, if, if you end up, if your kids put dirty clothes on the floor all the time, put the hamper where the clothes are on the floor, Mm -hmm. make it easy for them. And, you know, and kids are just overwhelmed. There's a lot going on, especially teenagers. You know, they, they're making decisions for the rest of their life. They've got friends, they've got girls, they've got school, they've got parents that they need, but they don't want. And, (laughs) and, and so they're driving and they're working and, and so much that, Room maintenance isn't high on their list. I know, but these are important habits that they are, are going to serve them well. They are they important habits. And so, you know, as our as parents, it's not our job to fix them. It is our job to teach them, guide them, encourage them. And, you know, I just say don't don't knock down your kids because of their room. Encourage them, teach them, motivate them instead of waging a war with them. 
Good advice. Good advice all the way around. I appreciate it so much. I'd like to end these visits, though, with a little questionnaire that uh, was similar to the one the late, great James Lipton would use on Inside the Actor's Studio. That ring a bell? You feel <laughs> not familiar no. with that? Okay. Well, that's okay. It was a wonderful show. He would interview, you know, famous film stars and so forth. He always asked these same kind of similar questions. What is your favorite word? Persnickety. Oh, that's a great word. I'm a wordy person. And so persnickety is one of my favorite words to say. It's one of my favorite words to use. Now, someone who runs a business called Need Us a Pen <laughs> would be a little bit persnickety, I guess. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Okay. What's your least favorite word? Honestly, this is, this is such an insight into Jennifer. This is so funny. Nobody's ever asked me this before. Um, building. Because a building is a building, and they've already built it, and it's already built. So why are we, why are we giving it an action name instead of a, a noun? <laughs> okay. So yeah, building it just messes with it. My when I get when I start thinking about it, I, my brain just goes in circles. Why is it? Why is it like that? But I don't know. It should be a structure. Right? It should be a structure. Okay. Correct. <laughs> All right. Good. I've never heard that before, but I love it. I love it. So what turns you on creatively, spiritually, emotionally? Making things pretty. And, and I do a lot of creative work and, and I enjoy it. I enjoy being creative. I enjoy dreaming things up, especially, you know, with businesses and, and marketing and the whole idea of all the things, but I, I create and I create and I create and I create. And so I'm spending less time actually with clients now. And so then I just have to, then I just have to do something. And so I spent a whole week creating this declutter challenge and then I'm like, oh, my brain. And so then I had to create this amazing beautiful, incredibly detailed spreadsheet for my budget for 2021. Mm. <laughs> and so I, you know, I love to create and I love to spread out and stretch and dream, but then I love to come back to the concrete, actionable things that I can control. What turns you off then? Creatively. Um, creatively is being micromanaged, mm. you know, here, Jennifer, do this, but only within these confines, you know, and, and for some people, for some people that will, that'll, that'll create creativity for them, but it, it doesn't for me. And as you know, I'm way better if I can just spread out and then come back. And, and so I just, I can't be creatively led very well. Okay. What sound do you love the most? Oh, the sound of my children laughing. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes me happier than to hear my family laughing and just happy together. What sound turns you off? Oh, this is so easy. Is the sound of music coming from the teeny tiny little speaker on my husband's cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of music does he listen to? You know, he listens to all kinds of things. It's not the music. It's just the lack of depth of that little bitty speaker. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it just feels, it sounds like a squirrel squeaking. <laughs> what other profession would you like to try? I just told somebody this the other day. I would love an opportunity to be a project manager for a construction company as odd as that sounds but to just control the whole thing and watch it grow and turn into something beautiful not a building but a structure a structure <laughs> a home <laughs> right mm -hmm. what what profession do you know you would not want to do i don't want to be an accountant I don't like, and you just talked about spreadsheets. Oh my, that's, I know, but it's beautiful. And that's the only way that I can make it work. If I had left it with just the white columns and, and rows, it would have never worked for me. It's absolutely beautiful, <laughs> <laughs> but, but numbers, I don't like them. And so I have to trick my brain into actually working with them. If it's got the colors and the lines, it's beautiful. I can, I can, I can make it work. Very good. Finally, what do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well done. Good and faithful servant. Very good. Very good. Well, let's uh, talk just in the last few minutes about Need Us a Pin. Okay. How can folks learn more about your business, get in touch with you, maybe uh, line something up, get some our, advice from you? Our website is super easy to access, needasapin.net. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Need Us a Pin. And then on Facebook, I have a group. It's called Declutter Together. And it is just all about decluttering. There's tons and tons of decluttering advice and and just direction that I have already put there and I continue to put some there as well. And so if you're just wanting to to make a difference in your world, that's a great place to start. Well, it's going to help a lot of folks. 
And I, I appreciate so. the time you've spent with us. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. It's been fun. Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. about Waco. So you may be asking yourself, why am I here? I'm here to be your tour guide through Waco. I'm here to tell you all the goings on in and around Waco. I'm going to give you the 411 on what's happening, what's going on, and what events you should go to. This is your host, Debbie, signing off. Now that you know, go. Just go, Waco. You are going on a run. Are you building a new business while managing a family? Are you tired of trying to balance home and work and everything seems to be coming up short? Then there's a podcast made just for you. Baking Your Business from Scratch is where we create the perfect recipe for building a successful business while managing your home and family with love. Come join us and see for yourself. This has been Rogue Media Network Podcast.